So it's been seven years since Scott Cawthon gave us the brainchild that is Five Nights at Freddy's, which has become an endearing and beloved franchise with a large community that keeps growing more and more. And with the release of Security Breach quickly approaching, I figured now would be the best time to take a look at the game that started it all and give it a fair assessment. Now in terms of the lore, I'll only be discussing what was available at the time that this game came out. Yet I'll delve more and more into the story as I review each game from the franchise. But nevertheless, let's waste no time and jump straight in. So before FNAF, Scott Cawthon had developed a game called Chipper and Sons Lumber Co., which is essentially a construction management type game where you play as a little beaver who's looking to start his own lumber company. In this game, you'll cut down trees to harvest for wood in order to sell and earn money to purchase various things for your business. It's a decent little game, yet it does get kind of repetitive as you're pretty much doing the same exact thing over and over. You harvest trees, you sell wood, you earn money, you purchase things, rinse, lather, and repeat. While it does have some unique minigames sprinkled in, it really wasn't enough to keep me invested in it. Yet the noteworthy thing about this game is, of course, the character designs and how creepy looking they are. Like seriously, they look like creepy animatronics from Chuck E. Cheese. And it's because of this and the negative reception that this game got that Scott decided to take the criticism and put his creepy and freakish character designs in his next game, which would be Five Nights at Freddy's. Five Nights at Freddy's was released for Steam on August the 8th, 2014. In this game, you work as a night shift security guard for Freddy Fazbear's Pizzeria. On your first night, you'll get a phone call from the one and only Phone Guy. And yes, that's what we call him because we don't really know much about Phone Guy or what he even looks like. And yes, that is Scott Cawthon doing the voice for Phone Guy. Upon discovering that damage or death has occurred, a missing person report will be filed within 90 days or as soon as property and premises have been thoroughly cleaned and bleached and the carpets have been replaced. Blah, blah, blah. Now, that might sound bad, I know, but there's really nothing to worry about. And who would have known that the man had such a manly voice? But yeah, he explains to you what your job as security guard is, which is to watch over the place while avoiding the five animatronics, which are Freddy, Chica, Bonnie, Foxy, and Golden Freddy. If one of them manages to enter the room, then they're gonna stuff your ass in that empty animatronic suit, which I gotta say is fucking brutal. So the goal of the game is to survive the animatronics until 6am, where you'll move on to the next night, which of course, as the name applies, there is a total of five nights in this game. Yet each night gets harder and harder as the animatronics become more and more aggressive, especially Foxy, who likes to run down the hallways. Yeah, you'll want to keep your eyes on this fucker because he wants nothing more than to make your night miserable. So here's how the gameplay works. You have your security cameras, which will help you find the animatronics. You have the lights, which allows you to see outside the hallways. And lastly, you have the two doors that you can close to keep the animatronics from entering the room. Sounds simple, doesn't it? Keep the doors shut and call it a night. Yeah, I wish it was that simple, but sadly that's not the case. I should also mention, not only do you have to deal with the animatronics, but you also have to contend with the power meter, which gradually depletes. Yet, depending on how many things you're doing will make it deplete more, which you'll want to avoid because if you lose all your power, then that's it. Game over. Unless you're lucky to reach 6am in time. Now, the game isn't completely unfair, as you'll just have to pay attention to everything and listen for some of those audio cues, which will let you know when an animatronic is approaching. This sort of makes the game a lot more manageable, yet trust me when I say this game will keep you on the edge of your toes as you will inevitably die and die again until you figure it out. Now normally I hate these type of games that just jump scare you, because jump scares are not scary. They are just loud noises that are meant to startle you, and it's just the cheapest and impractical thing. Yet, while FNAF is pretty much a jump scare fest, it does manage to be a bit unsettling and campy, which I love. Yet, that's mainly because of the overall atmosphere. I mean, you're in a small room, which already gives me claustrophobia. Everywhere is dark in the game, which makes it more unnerving. And you're always on the edge of your seat, anticipating for one of these fuckers to come in and end your game. Also, you start to hallucinate and see messages pop up 
which only adds more tension and suspense as you never know what's going to happen. And this leads us into the lore, which by the way, spoilers ahead. So as you progress through the game, you start to unravel the many layers of this twisted world of FNAF. On the walls, you will see newspaper articles talking about five missing children, which turns out that someone had murdered them and stuffed their bodies into these animatronics. Meanwhile, the pizzeria is threatened to closure due to the complaints of a foul smell coming from the animatronics. Now, at the time, that was all we got in terms of the lore, as it was, for the most part, vague and left to our own interpretation, which led many fans and YouTubers to come up with their own theories and speculation as to who is behind it and what's actually going on, which in all honesty makes for a good mystery when everything isn't answered straight away. I mean, that's what sequels are for, right? Now let's discuss the animatronics and how they work. You have the leader of the band, Freddy Fazbear, who will appear on the right, yet you'll rarely encounter him. However, if you lose all your power, then he'll be the one to end your game. And for some odd reason, Freddy likes to hide in the shadows because I guess he's afraid of light or something. Then you have Chica the Chick, who will always come from the right side, and she is the most terrifying looking one out of all of them. Those black outlined eyes just stares into your soul. Fucking creepy as hell. Then you have Bonnie the Bunny who is the fastest one and likes to move room to room, almost like he's just randomly teleporting all over the place. Which he'll always appear on the left, so Bonnie and Chica are the only two animatronics that may be a threat to you. Whereas Freddy and Foxy, not so much. Then, of course, there is Foxy, who will approach you from the left door, where you'll have to monitor Foxy's cove constantly, because once he is off his stage, you have about five seconds to shut that door, or else he will get you. But besides that, he's not really much of a threat, and he's easily avoidable. Now, Golden Freddy is the one you don't have to really worry about at all because he only shows up during hallucinations, which is rare. Yet, when he does show up, not only does he jump scare you, but he also crashes your game. You can also cause your game to crash by going to custom night mode and entering 1987, which Golden Freddy appears instantly and crashes your game. Obviously, 1987 is a reference to the Bite of 87, which Phone Guy does mention in one of the calls. And then there was the bite of 87. Yeah. It's amazing that the human body can live without the frontal lobe, you know? Apparently, someone ended up with their frontal lobe bitten by one of the animatronics, and many have speculated that it had to be either Freddy or Foxy. But I'll get more into the bite of 87 in the next game, which, oh boy, do I have a lot to say about that. So once you make it through five nights, you get a paycheck of $120? Seriously, I'm practically risking my life for $120? All right, I just, I gotta leave, okay? No, we just started, come on, man. We listen, just, listen, gotta... there's a lot to see in this life. I'm not wasting it here. Yet, you also get a star and unlock the sixth night, which I guess calling the game Six Nights at Freddy's isn't as catchy. Yet, once you beat the sixth night, you get your second star and unlock custom night mode. So that makes seven nights. Yeah, is it too late to see if McDonald's is hiring? On custom night mode, you can set the difficulty of the animatronics. Yet, setting it to 2020-2020 mode, which is the hardest difficulty in the game, gets you all three stars on the title screen, and you get fired for tampering with the animatronics. Which means I'm done with this game and fuck you guys. But all in all, the first FNAF game I think holds up quite well, despite the gameplay sort of being repetitive. Which isn't necessarily a bad thing, as the game is relatively short and fun to get into. Yet obviously, the thing I'm mostly intrigued by is how creative the game is, from how freakishly horrifying the animatronics look, to the overall dark and morbid atmosphere. It shows you that Scott thought of everything and that this was a passion project that became and grew into this franchise with books, fan games, fan art, and a community that is so enthralled with this series that it's still growing to this day. Now this was fun for me to go back and re-experience FNAF 1, as I'm sure a lot of you have been expecting me to do a review of the FNAF games, which don't worry. I'm going to get to the other games as I'm very much looking forward to this. So hopefully you guys join me on this journey as we take a look at all the other FNAF games. 
as well as look forward to FNAF Security Breach, which I'm highly anticipating for this game. But nevertheless, I hope you guys enjoyed this review. Please let me know in the comments section what you guys thought of it, and yeah, I'll see you guys in the next review.